Welcome to the Gigaspace ZAP8 Administration API screencast. In this screencast, we'd like to explain a little bit about platform administration and why an admin API is so important. And then we'd like to show you the admin API in action. So why is administration important? Well, if you can't examine the state of an application, you can't see what it's doing well or badly. Nor can you change the application's state. This should be fairly obvious. After all, you know, JMX has been around forever, and J2EE application servers have provided administration facilities even before that. In distributed applications, though, it's even more important because the number of moving parts has increased. JMX can show you what one virtual machine is doing, but can't necessarily show you what every machine is doing. And in a cloud, the operation of a single machine is less important than the overall system health. Naturally, Gigaspaces provides full administration capabilities through a set of applications. There's the GSUI application, which you see here. It's a Swing application that connects to a, a Zap instance and displays the components being managed. Um, you can see here, we've got things deployed. We don't have any spaces deployed, but you can see everything is present here at the very least. We also provide a web UI. Um, the web UI isn't quite as full featured as the uh, Swing application yet, but since it's web based, it's easier to see past a firewall, for example, so it's great for remote administration. In both cases, though, you see system health and status, including the overuse of memory here. Um, you, know, you can see the alert here, uh, which tells me that I had too much memory allocated. Um, and you can generally tweak, tweak the system as needed, meaning the uh, whole distributed platform rather than just a specific machine. However, what if you could get the system to monitor itself? That's what an SLA is for, a service level agreement. But an SLA is still fairly coarse in terms of how it works. You can set an SLA to make sure that a given number of primary and backup instances are available. You can even set an SLA on system performance metrics such like CPU usage or memory usage with the Elastic Service Manager. But again, these are fairly coarse even if they do cover 95% or more of the use cases. Two issues though. The UI is a manual thing, meaning you have to interact with it, and it doesn't cover those last 5%. So what we've done is exposed a set of APIs. We have JMX, of course, um, but JMX is machine level and thus is usable, but not entirely appropriate for general administration tasks on a distributed platform. We also have the Elastic Service Manager, which allows you to deploy services in very finely tuned ways. You tell the ESM what you want your cloud to look like, and it handles all the gory details, including the alerts like this one, um, to provision new instances of new, in you know, to handle overflow. It's actually quite elegant, but it's outside of the screencast scope. However, you lastly have the admin API, which you can acquire each deployment unit, meaning lookup services, agents, managers, containers, and deployed applications themselves, and modify them. So let's show some of this in action. Here we have a very originally named showcomponents.groovy. It's uh, you know, obviously groovy. Um, Groovy helps us uh, avoid a lot of the Java boilerplate, um, you know, stuff that admi admins aren't likely to want to deal with anyway. Um, note that I am not a Groovy master, so be ready, especially when it comes to console output, okay? This is really pretty basic stuff, but this is also going to be fairly along the, the line of what uh, your standard Groovy, you know, your standard admin is going to run into. So, uh, let's look at this. First, what we have is uh, we acquire an admin instance. It's just a, a standard uh, object here through an admin factory. And through this, we can get anything we need. We can get the grid service agents. We can get the grid service managers, which actually do the deployments. We can get grid service containers, which actually hold the deployments and print out information about them, including, in, in this case, information about what the processing units are. So uh, let's go ahead and run this so we can see what's going on. So what we're doing here is we see that we have five processing units, uh, there's five containers deployed with two processing units. So, uh, one's Wicked Examples, which we'll play with later, and the other, is the, the other is the web UI itself. Well, what we can do with these then is we can examine their state and modify them. And it's very good for us to talk about that, but even better for us to do it. So let's uh, deploy a memcached instance into our data grid. 
So let's go ahead and run the deploy memcache theme. And you can see that it's connecting. Um, it's starting everything up. And we don't see any output here because we don't have any output here. But if we flip over here to our topology, we now have a memcached D instance down here that you can see has been allocated. Um, this is new. If we flip over to our our, uh, our thing over here, we can see we had, we had seen just these two earlier, but the GSUI, GSUI now shows a memcached D instance deployed programmatically. Now, it's all nice to be able to deploy things, but it will be even nicer to be able to scale up or down. So we also have uh, this Wicket instance right here. Uh, this is the Wicket example application that was basically copied directly from the Wicket uh, application and it you know, runs everything normally. There's nothing really spectacular here. This is running inside Zap, uh, inside of a Jetty instance in Zap. Um, but let's say that we have too much load on it, which we can determine through the admin API. What we can do then is actually run scale at something like this, which says, you know, we get a, an admin instance, we get the grid service manager, then we look for a processing unit called Wicked Examples 147, um, or 1417, and we wait for 30 seconds just in case it's, you know, not actually there. Um, I'm not doing any error checking here. I should be doing error checking, but you know, whatever. Um, but anyway, so what we're doing here is we're actually getting the processing unit that refers to the wicked examples, and then we're saying increment instance, which basically tells it to create a, a, a another primary copy of the instance that we already have deployed. Um, very exciting, as I'm sure you can imagine. But let's go ahead and... and um, and run this thing just to uh, just to get it to just so we can see things in action. So um, it's about to stop. Isn't that exciting? Now the the cool thing is if we flip back over to our UI over here, um, we will actually see. Let's see. Here is the um, here's the web UI. Here's the um, Okay, this is the one that's actually deploying now. This is the actual instance that's running. This is running, copying a new version of the Wicked Examples. So if we come over here, in just a moment, we'll see another version over here. You can see it's got another one planned. And now we have another copy here, which we can, if we look at our, again, let's look at our original application again just to make sure which, uh, which URLs we're on. We're on port 8081. So then we flip back over to the UI, and we can see this one's on 8082. Let's crank that up, and lo and behold, we're now running another instance. If you had the full load balancer, um, you know, if you had your load balancer configured and everything, and shared sessions, these could actually be uh, completely shared nodes. They would look exactly the same to the system. Um, this is a very powerful capability because it means that, you know, what you're able to do is you're able to use the admin API to examine what your system is doing, I mean, the overall health of your application. And because you're able to do that and because you're able to control the deployment of your application, you can actually automate the management of your system um, without you know, human intervention, you can actually use the alerts API. You may have seen, remember that we showed um, you know, a memory, uh, a memory uh, exhaustion early uh, right here. You can actually use all of this to trigger events and use the admin API to finally control uh, you know, your entire cloud, which is very, very powerful. Um, you can actually build your own automated solution, really. And actually, we are building one uh, to be released soon in uh, 2011. Um, but it's not out quite yet, but it's on its way. But you can see where the capabilities are here that for you as end users to be able to do whatever you need to do for your application so you're not relying on anyone else's uh, you know, facilities and you're not relying on anyone else's capabilities in terms of providing cloud services. Thank you very much for watching.